Okay, so we've kind of covered patients' rights. Now let's move on to patients' responsibilities. So, yes, indeed, with rights come responsibilities. Um, I think I've covered this a little bit earlier when talking about the uh, sort of symbiotic almost relationship, partnership between the healthcare professional and the patient. So it's, it's not unilateral and it's reciprocal. So patients obviously must also pay, play their part. Now, if the patient's unable to do so uh, due to mental incapacity, then healthcare professionals will often engage with the patient's family members and loved ones, if any, or there might be a legal representative that has been appointed. Now, there may be challenges if patients and or their family for whatever reason, are unable or unwilling to participate in the relationship. We will consider some of those challenges a little later. First of all, looking at respect for persons and property. The patient should treat healthcare professionals and other healthcare staff with dignity and respect in the healthcare encounter. So really, this boils down to the patient not abusing or disrespecting healthcare professionals and other healthcare staff. Now, this applies not only to the patients, but also their family members and loved ones who may be involved in the healthcare encounter or visiting them. And it speaks to a broader duty of care. So it extends to not damaging property at the healthcare site and being mindful that such behavior can potentially harm, and that could be direct or indirect, other patients and visitors at the healthcare site. Patients should share relevant information to enable the healthcare team to offer the best quality care and treatment. So healthcare professionals need relevant information right, in order to do their job effectively and to provide appropriate care and treatment. They need information such as the patient's medical history, their personal details, the medications they're taking, uh, and so on. Now, sometimes patients may not always know what information is relevant or they may forget or they may misunderstand information or they may be embarrassed to disclose it. Understanding these reasons is an important step that healthcare professionals can take to build trust with the patient. However, this process in itself could be quite challenging and we always have concerns about time constraints that are experienced by healthcare professionals. Now, some patients may deliberately hide the information or not tell the truth. And this could be for many different reasons. Uh, some of them may be benign, some of them may be more nefarious. And these situations could be quite complicated and difficult to manage. When we're talking or discussing about the patient's right to make decisions about their health care and treatment, it kind of begs the question about, well, does the patient have a responsibility to ask questions about their treatment? So we earlier looked at this right and highlighted that patients can ask questions and for those who have difficulty articulating their concerns, ideally they could be encouraged to participate in the decision-making process. Generally speaking, healthcare professionals welcome questions from the patient and their family and they worry when actually when there aren't or any questions or there are not many questions. Um, it could raise various concerns, including whether the patient has understood what the healthcare team have conveyed. There could also be other reasons why the patient uh, doesn't ask questions. They could be shy, they could be unsure what to ask, or maybe they need time to think or process the information to determine what to ask. They perhaps don't ask, understand the explanation given by the healthcare professionals and they're shy or unwilling to ask them to expand on it some more. And perhaps they just may want to avoid any kind of disagreement or confrontation. So healthcare professionals and healthcare institutions can offer some support to foster the patient's autonomy and encourage them to participate more actively, although this may take some time to actually carry out. Now, when we're talking again about patients' responsibilities, it raises the question about their responsibility to follow treatment plans. The patient should follow the treatment plan and engage with the healthcare professionals if they have difficulties in following through with it. 
So when the treatment plan has been arranged and agreed between the patient and the healthcare team, the patient has a responsibility to follow through with it within reason. So for example, if there are lots of side effects or other challenges from the treatment, the patients should approach the healthcare professionals for advice. Although sometimes I suppose giving up on it uh, might be an option that some patients would resort to and there could be reasons for doing that as well or perhaps waiting uh, a long time before following up with the treatment team again. Um, so, and sometimes it could also be that patients do want to follow the treatment plan but they find it very challenging to do so. This could be because of their work arrangements, for example, or family arrangements, which do not make it conducive for them to follow through with the plan that's been agreed. So that's a sort of situation really where the plan will probably have to be revisited and reconsidered to how it might be able to be tweaked in order to better suit the patient's current circumstances so that they can actually um, follow through with it. The patient does have a responsibility to pay their, their medical bills and patients may still have to pay a bill even after tapping into MediSave, MediShield or any other insurance plan. So the universal health that we have in Singapore may not go to the extent that all of your bills are covered. You may still have to have a copay or a certain amount to pay. And so these bills do need to be paid promptly. Of course, there may be occasions when patients have difficulties in paying for their bills for whatever reason, and when that occurs, they should seek assistance from the healthcare institution so they could work out um, a plan. Next, let's look at some of the sources of patients' responsibilities. First, the patient should treat healthcare professionals and other healthcare staff with dignity and respect in the healthcare encounter. Well, this is probably baked in institutional policies um, but patients might not always have access to that. This is also actually enshrined in the law. So for example, uh, Section 6 of the Protection from Harassment Act um, and Section 31 of the Penal Code, which relates to voluntary co voluntarily causing hurt, are two provisions that could be used um, against individuals who um, abuse healthcare staff. In relation to patient sharing relevant information to enable the healthcare team to offer best quality care, well, that's really a shared responsibility. So it's, it's not, you know, if you like in, in, in a law, but it basically is in order for that relationship to function well and for the healthcare team to be able to offer quality care for the patient, it, the patient does need to trust the healthcare team and provide the information that's required in order for them to offer appropriate treatments to the patient. In relation to the patient following the treatment plan and engaging with healthcare professionals, if there are any difficulties in doing so, this again speaks to the shared responsibility I've just mentioned um, in relation to in the care that the patient will receive is going to be affected by the extent to which they follow through with it. So it's important again that the patient makes that contribution and engages with the treatment plan and follows through with it and hopefully that will uh, help them heal and, and restore them to health again. And finally, the patient has the responsibility to pay their health care bills. Well, when you um, experience health care in a health care institution, you would usually incur bills for that and uh, there would be a requirement for you to pay it under contract law because you've, cut, you've made it an agreement with the healthcare institution to pay them in exchange for the healthcare and treatment that you have received. So it's enforceable through that means. Now, just a couple of challenges to round off this, this talk. The first one, I think is quite an interesting one. Um, it, I'm raising it more as a question here. Do patients have a responsibility to take care of themselves by refraining from unhealthy behaviours like uh, poor diets, uh, smoking and excessive alcohol consumption? Now, the ways in which these unhealthy behaviours are often characterised could imply that patients are morally responsible 
and therefore could be blamed for failing to modify their behaviors. The implication here is that patients should be able to control themselves better and so modify their behaviors. However, we've seen that some studies have shown that good outcomes may be modest even when the patients have good support. So control may be quite limited. Research has also shown that poor health outcomes are more common amongst deprived groups. So stigmatizing unhealthy behaviors could actually cause patients to feel shame. Instead of blaming patients, they could be encouraged and supported instead on the ways that they could improve their quality of life and foster their well-being. Now, the second challenge relates to abusive patients. Abuse or harassment cases, especially in the public healthcare institutions in Singapore, increased between 2018 and 2020. The most common types of abuse uh, are shouting, threats by patients or caregivers to file complaints or take legal action against healthcare workers and demeaning comments. So this was uncovered in a recent tripartite to prevent abuse and harassment of healthcare workers report. Abuse cases also went up during the COVID-19 period due to healthcare professionals' intense workload and shortages of healthcare workers. The work group recommended that institutions train their staff to prevent potential abusive situations by equipping them with skills and knowledge to manage and de-escalate challenging situations. So this is another aspect of um, patients' rights and responsibilities in terms of, you know, when we expect healthcare professionals to treat patients with dignity and respect. Uh, it obviously should go the other way as well and patients, their loved ones, should also treat healthcare professionals and the rest of the healthcare team with respect also. Okay, so just to conclude, in this short presentation, we have covered patients' rights and responsibilities, as well as looking at some of the challenges faced by healthcare, healthcare professionals when they are caring for patients. Thank you very much.